phones are lit. Dimitri Vasilaros is on the air, live and dangerously local. News Radio 1020, KDKA. is the only politician, federal, state, or local, that I've ever admired, unabashed. He is from uh, the Pittsburgh area here. He uh, grew up in Green Tree, went to Dormont High School, now, of course, part of Keystone Oaks. He was a great athlete in high school. Uh, actually went to the uh, state finals and won several state championships for uh, 100-yard dash or 220. I mean, an incredible human being. He's uh, also an OBGYN. And, of course, he is a libertarian. He ran for the uh, presidency uh, as a libertarian candidate in 1988. Uh, he is now officially in the GOP, but make no mistake about it, he is a libertarian in the true sense of the word. And one of the reasons, in fact, the reason why I admire this man so much is because not only is he principled, but he won't waver from his principles. He has strong principles, and some other, you know, politicians do too, but they tend to waver. This guy does not waver. If it's not part of the Constitution, which he has sworn to uphold and protect and defend, then he will not vote for it, no matter what it is, no matter what it's going to cost him. And for the longest time, Dr. Ron Paul, the congressman from the Tex Houston uh, area of Texas, has been warning us about what finally came to be. The meltdown on Wall Street, the incredible uh, money uh, uh, policy that is just insane. And for the longest time, he has demanded that we know what the heck is going on with the Federal Reserve. And he has a bill that he's been introducing now for I don't know how long, demanding simply an audit of the Federal Reserve, just so that you and I know what are they doing with our money. Finally, mainstream politicians, Republicans and Democrats in Congress... After this meltdown, are going, hey, you know, that, uh, that Dr. Ron Paul, you might be onto something. Maybe we should get some idea of what the hell's going on with our money. So now he's got strong bipartisan support for this bill. Dr. Ron Paul, welcome back to News Radio 1020 KDK. How are you, sir? Doing fine. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor for me anytime I can have you on my program. It truly is an honor. So tell me, Dr. Paul. What exactly is the Federal Reserve, and why should we care? Well, it's called a central bank. It used to be that occasionally governments would have central banks. We tried to have a central bank in our early history, but we got along without it for a good while. But all the countries of the world now have central banks. They manage the money supply. No country is on a sound monetary system. There's nobody on a gold standard or a silver standard. The politicians, uh, through their central bank, are able to spend what they want, and they can print the money that they need uh, to make up the difference. And uh, this is very dangerous. It, 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 the, the, one of the biggest problems is it encourages big government. That means they don't have to pay the bills. If we'd have to pay all our bills right now for running the war in the welfare state, and they tax the people, the people would rebel. But because of this sinister way of managing government by printing money and letting the penalty fall on different people at different times, it's, it's a hidden tax. So it's nothing more than a, a, a vicious way of taxing the people. And it is said in Austrian economics that if you do destroy and undermine a, a monetary system and a currency, you literally wipe out the middle class. A lot of people can understand this when they think about what happened in Germany. When you have runaway inflation, the middle class got wiped out. Or in Mexico, how many times has the peso gone to zero and everybody's savings goes to zero? Zimbabwe, it just happened recently. And it happened, it's happening to us now in a much slower fashion, but it could accelerate and it's very, very dangerous. So the central bank is, is really, in a, in a real uh, technical sense, is a taxing authority. It's a way they can tax the people and transfer wealth from one group to another. And even when the crisis came, which we anticipated, uh, all the bailout, whether it's through the Federal Reserve or through Treasury, has all gone to bail out the people who, who benefited all along. So the Goldman Sachs and other big Wall, Wall Street firms they're making off like bandits, and the people are now suffering, and that's why I think so many people are so angry. 
I've heard uh, someone describe the Federal Reserve as this. It's well, it's it's not federal, and they don't reserve anything. They don't have any reserve funds. Is that true? No, no, they don't have any reserves. Their reserves depend on um, a, a trust in the money, an illusion. It used, they used to have reserves. They had gold, and that's why they built trust up over the years, and that's why it functioned for a good while. But it, that part of the system collapsed in 1971. It's not, it, it's, it's really unique. Some people, you know, talk about is it private or is it government? And it's not private in the sense of uh, somebody starting a company. Uh, I used to use the term General Motors, but I can't use that as a private company anymore because it's been nationalized. But it's not private in that sense because it's been created by government. Uh, the Federal Reserve Act was passed by Congress. But what is so sinister about it, it was turned over to private individuals who can run everything secretly. That's why, of course, the yada is, uh, is so important. So it's been federally created. It's special. It's secretive. It has privileges far and beyond any private corporation. Private corporations would have to yield to anti, anti-fraud laws, but the Federal Reserve commits fraud by counterfeiting money. So we've legalized a secret organization that can counterfeit money and tell, take care of all their friends, fight wars that we shouldn't be fighting, and run a welfare state that's doomed to fail. Now we see the poor people losing their jobs, losing their homes, and it's just as a lousy system. My guest is Dr. Ron Paul, Libertarian Congressman from the Houston area of Texas. Officially, he's a Republican. If you'd like to speak with him, if you have questions, you might want to line up now. The Dr. Ron Paul hotline is 412-333-KDKA. That's 412-333-5352. You can also go online at kdkradio.com and click Dollar Bank Instant Access if you have a question for Dr. Ron Paul. Dimitri live and dangerously local every Saturday night from 6 to 9 right here. News Radio 1020. He's Pittsburgh's lovable libertarian. Dimitri Pesolaros is talking to you. News Radio 1020 KDKA. My very special guest is Dr. Ron Paul, libertarian congressman from Texas. Officially, he's in the GOP, but uh, he officially just represents uh, you and cares about you and cares about the uh, problems with our uh, with our money. Uh, Dr. Paul, a question about the... Uh, the Federal Reserve, some have described it as a bank cartel. Is that a fair way of describing it? Not only, we think of the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve, uh, the Federal Reserve Board, of course, is made up of seven plus five that makes up the Federal Open Market Committee, and they sort of run things from Washington, D.C., but then they have all the regional banks, and every bank has to join, and they own some stocks, and then they get some dividends. But the the fact that they can create money out of thin air and uh, place it in, in, in banks for their benefit, the fractional reserve banking system is also uh, something that benefits uh, you know, the bankers. They're, they can loan out money they don't really have. So it's, it's all based on, on fraud. So it's very, very big, and the banks, uh, the banks do make up a cartel because they they dictate what money should be and the market has no control over it when the goal when the dollar was backed by gold there was a restraint but now there isn't the 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 law still says that legal tender the constitution and the law says that the legal tender is a dollar of silver or or gold but today if you use gold or silver you can go to prison for this and there is no law that says that the federal reserve note equals one dollar one federal reserve note equals one dollar you can't find a place in the law that says that is the case. It just sort of morphed into this. But if nobody accepts...